All right, guys, part two, bison hindquarter. We're going to go ahead and show you how to break it down. Starting with this uh, little outside flat meat right here, we're going to go ahead and remove that. That will get trimmed into uh, ground bison. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that flat meat, the flapper meat off of there. Next is going to be the bison flank steak. Go ahead and pull the flank steak off. And I'll show you how to trim all this stuff out, but uh, as for now, we're just gonna get it laid out on the table. So there's the flank. Next up is the sirloin tip or the round tip. Right here, there's a knuckle. You wanna break through that knuckle, take your hook, hook it in this piece right here on the top. And then you want to take your knife and follow down along that femur bone all the way down to the top of the sirloin. Pull your round tip up and bring it towards yourself, removing that round tip. Once the round tip's removed, we're going to go ahead and take the bison suet out of this animal. Now right behind this suet is the tenderloin. So the tenderloin runs from the top of the sirloin all the way down through the, the back here. So when you're taking this suet out of here, you want to be real careful that you don't cut into that tenderloin, that prized chunk of meat right there. So just keep that in mind that you want to protect that piece. Now, this portion here on this hind, you can cut this a couple different ways. You can do tenderloin, you can do boneless sirloin and strip steak, or you can do sirloins, and then you can do, leaving the bone in, porterhouse and T-bones. Today, um, here again, we're only gonna be using a handsaw, so we're gonna go ahead and make boneless steaks today, which are the sirloin, the filet, and the strip. Once we get our, our suet out of there, we're gonna go ahead and make this cut um, right through this little ball joint and we're going to score the back of the sirloin and then at this point we're going to go ahead and use our hand saw to remove this short loin. So you can see bison short loin. Now we have the hind portion. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off the rail. We'll get it down on the table and I'll show you how to break it down. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this hind quarter. We're gonna break the, the shank off of it. We'll pull the H bone out. We'll separate this into the different muscles. So follow along. Starting with uh, cutting that big tendon in the back. We're gonna grab our beloved six inch Victorinox boning knife. This is by far our favorite knife. It's available on our website, www.beardofbutcherblend.com. Um, if you want one of these, highly, highly recommended for this type of butchering, any type of butchering for that matter. We love these. So starting at this knuckle right here on the back of this shank, take your knife, work through that knuckle removing that shank off of there. Here again, you can cut some uh, cross cut soup bones, some asabuco. We're gonna now remove, this is an, it's, it's what you call an oyster steak right here. We're gonna remove this oyster steak out. Inside of that sage bone. So there's your oyster. Let's pull this sage bone out of here following around this bone. Having done this a few times, I know where all these different uh, angles are on these bones and where the, where the knuckles are and where to cut. So for the person that's just getting started, it may not be as easy finding all those different uh, angles. Just remember when you're doing something like that, that's where you're gonna, you're gonna stick yourself. So that's why we're wearing the chain mail here today. Now that we have that H bone out of there, we're just going to 
separate this out into the different muscle pieces and I'll show you where those are all located. So first thing we're going to start with is we're going to pull this femur bone out. Cutting on all the sides. That just pulls right out of there. We'll trim that up later for our ground products. Clean it up a little better, make it look a little nicer. So now let's separate these seams out. We're going to pull the what's called the heel of round out of here. So let's go ahead and pull the heel of round out. That's just going to get made into ground bison. Now this portion here, this is the bison top round. That's the top round. We have the bison eye of round. So that's an eye of round. And then we have the bison bottom round. Similar to a, a venison carcass, there's a gland located in there inside that piece of fat, so we want to ditch that and get rid of it. Now we want to just go ahead and clean these up, remove the gristle off of them, square them up. This portion here, this can be used for stew meat, it can be used for roasts, it can be used for jerky, you can make it into cube steak, whatever you wish. So there's the bottom round. This is the eye round. We'll go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit. Get it squared up. Bison eye round. Now we have our bison top round. This portion can be used for London broil, it can be used for round steak, cube steak, jerky, um, stew meat, stir fry, any of those items. Today we're going to cut it into some jerky, some whole muscle jerky, bison jerky cut against the grain. Can't beat it. So we're going to remove the cap off of here. Now that we have the cap removed, we're going to cut some jerky. In doing that, we start, we want to cut it. The grains are running this way. So you can see they're all running right here. We want to cut against the grain. We want to cut these slices about an inch and a quarter or so thick. Just like this. And then to cut our jerky, we want to go against the grain. As you can see, those strands are running this direction. So that's going to be, it's going to pull apart real nice when you go to eat it. So when you refer to whole muscle jerky cut against the grain, that's exactly what it should look like. We're just going to continue to cut this top round in here to jerky, cutting it as thin as we can, trying not to exceed that eighth inch or so. As you can see, you know, we used our six inch boning knife to break that whole hind quarter down. Now we're using it to cut jerky. So this knife really is, you know, multi-use. You can skin with it. We skin, you know, deer with it. We field dress them. We do all kinds of breakdown with it. Highly, highly recommended purchasing this, this particular knife. You won't regret it. Holds uh, an edge really well. Buy yourself a, a steel. We have available on our websites as well. Hit it with a steel a few times. You know, hit it on a stone occasionally and you've got one whale of a blade. Now just remember when you make jerky, um, your start weight, 
that's what you want to season, but you are going to lose about 50% when you smoke it. So just keep that in mind, especially if, uh, you know, you have an animal processed somewhere or a deer or an elk or a bison or something like that. You take it to a local processor and he charges you for 15 or 20 pounds of jerky and you only get, you know, 10 or 12 pounds back and you're like, you know, where's the rest of my meat? Well, you lost it in the shrinkage. So there's our, there's our bison jerky cut from that top round. Very, very, very nice strips for jerky. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the round tip now. Sirloin tip. Starting with removing that knuckle bone. Now we wanna take the membrane off the top of this roast. Beautiful bison sirloin tip, round tip, it, it can be called either of those. Some folks have cut this into steaks. We typically cut it into roasts. Some really, really nice roasts. You can use this, um, you know, put some meat, veggies in it, throw some beer to butcher blend seasoning in it, put it in your slow cooker. You can put it in a Dutch oven, put it on your big green egg, cook it over an open fire, however you want to do it. Um, you can also barbecue it, make a, a shredded barbecue sandwich. So there's our round tip roast. Located right on the top of that round tip and in, in that membrane is the tri-tip. So for the smokers out, you know, the, the guys that are smoking in their backyard out there, um, this one, comes highly recommended. Nice tri-tip. You do a slow smoke on it. Delicious. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the flank steak. Cutting this yellow cord off the side. Start by getting a hold of your membrane here at the top. Pulling the membrane off. Now we can find this seam right here that holds this flank in. Use your fingers just to peel it out of there. Making gentle cuts as needed just to pull that flank right out of there. Trim it up a little bit, make it nice and round, make it look good in the meat case. Looks good going on the grill, looks good going on the plate. Now sometimes what we do with this flank is we actually take it and we'll butterfly it. So you hold it down flat against your table surface and you butterfly this open and then we like to fill it with uh, some feta cheese, peppers and onions, roll it, season it with some Bearded Butcher Blend seasoning and uh, grill it. And then we like to take our uh, Chipotle Bearded Butcher Blend seasoning and we like to mix it in mayonnaise and make a Chipotle mayo. Put that on top of there after it's been grilled. Incredible. Now what we have left is this short loin. The short loin consists of tenderloin, strip, and sirloin. All right, so getting started on this short loin, I'm gonna remove the tenderloin for, first. What I like to do is I like to get a hold of my blade um, just a little bit lower, making sure that you don't uh, cut the palm of your hand, but then just work your blade right down along this vertebrae, making a cut all the way along this back. And then what I do is I flip it around and slowly pull this tenderloin out. Now just remember, this piece right here is the most expensive cut on the bison. So you wanna get nice and close to that bone and remove as much of that tenderloin as you possibly can because you certainly don't wanna waste any of it for its value. So removing that tenderloin out of there 
There's that whole piece. Now let's go ahead and break the sirloin off. Got to find this knuckle right here. Putting some downward pressure against the table and the sirloin, you can pop that knuckle. And you can remove it right off of there. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the bone off the sirloin. Cut some real nice boneless sirloin steaks. So I got the bone removed. Trim it up a little bit. You can leave this as a roast, make a sirloin roast. Um, today, for this application, we're going to go ahead and cut it into some steaks. Any of the trimmings that you take off of this, you can cut into, um, make some excellent stir fry, some kebabs, just fantastic cut of meat, super tender, packed with protein, very nice sirloin steaks right there. Now what we'll do is we'll move on to the strip portion. Now here again, normally if I was on the bandsaw, I'd buzz that off there with the saw, but um, since we're not using the bandsaw today, I'm going to go ahead and remove the strip loin out of the short loin, simply um, just using my knife. Staying as close to the bones as you can. Once you get that portion somewhat boned out, you can move to the back, cut along this vertebrae, the spine here. That allows that to kind of break free. You can see now we have that strip loin out. Trim things up a little bit, smooth them out so when we cut it into steaks, we have some really nice, presentable, high quality bison steaks. We'll go ahead and square our steak end up and we'll just start cutting strip steaks. Cutting these about an inch and a quarter. Usually you're going to get about 10 to 11 off of a bison this size. Sometimes a larger beef carcass you can get you know 14 to 16 but two four six eight nine oh, got nine off of this one I cut them a little bit thicker so there's our strip steaks now moving forward we're gonna go ahead and do the tenderloin we want to remove this membrane off this tenderloin you can leave this whole um, you can you know do a tenderloin roast we can cut filet mignons Today, we're going to cut some filet mignons. Once you get this outside lip on this tenderloin started, you can pretty much just peel it, peel it off with your hands. That'll be trimmed out into some ground bison. We need to remove the silver skin on the top here, so the way we do that Hold your hand right on the top of it. Get your knife started underneath that silver skin. Working your way all the way down through the end. Trying to leave as much meat on the tenderloin as you possibly can, because remember, that's value that you're trimming off. So you want to stay as close to the meat as you can when you're removing this silver skin.
Now that we have the silver skin removed, we're going to go ahead and cut our filet mignons. We're going to cut these about an inch and a half thick. Just a real nice, big portion. These can be a bacon wrapped filet, grill them, reverse sear them on a big green egg, put them in a cast iron skillet, guaranteed to be to die for. So we'll just work our way down through here, continuing to cut these bison fillets. Bottom round, go ahead and cut this into a few roasts. We have our eye around. We're going to go ahead and leave that hole. And there you have it. So this is a bison hindquarter. We have our filet mignon. We have our sirloin steaks. We have our strip steaks, our round tip roast, top round cut for jerky, eye of round, bottom round roast, a tri-tip, and a flank steak. The trimmings, we'll trim all those out. Um, those will go into ground bison for sake of time on, our, on this video. Um, we'll do this at a later date. We're gonna do about a 90-10 grind on this. We'll make some pre-made patties. We'll do some ground beef, one and two pound packs of bulk. Maybe even some uh, bison, some sausages, some smokies, things of that nature. But as you see it here, these are all of the cuts that you get off of a bison hindquarter. And that was all done with a knife and a handsaw. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This was bison cutting part two of the hind quarter. If you wanna see part one, which is the front quarter, refer back to that video. You can see portions of the bison harvest. You can see this entire half being processed right here at White Feather Meats in Creston, Ohio. See you next time.